Hi, and welcome to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast, a weekly conversation with women who found their home in the Mojave Desert. I'm your host, Dawn Davis, and this is episode number 15. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, thanks so much for coming back. The website is DesertLadyDiaries.com, and you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. If you'd like to call with questions or comments, the number is 760 392 one two nine three, or you can email us at desertladydiaries at gmail dot com. This week, my guest is sound artist Kate Lee Short, who found herself in a tense and crazy space looking for serenity and peace, and found it in the silence and desolation of the desert, which has transformed her life. Thanks for coming back to Desert Lady Diaries. My guest today is artist Kate Lee Short. She is a visual artist who has a deep passion to unveil sacred moments in everyday life. She creates large, immersive sculptural installations that by scale alone ask people to engage all of their senses and come on a journey with her in search of those cherished spaces. Her primary medium is sound, but her main focus is on deeply understanding silence, which makes me happy because I love silence. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. So tell me about your very first encounter with the desert in general. The desert in general. um, Well, I came out to Joshua Tree back in 1995. Wow. When I uh, I first came to California, my uh, boyfriend at the time took me around California to all of the most amazing places ever. And we... We went to Joshua Tree. We also went to Death Valley. And it was really amazing, and I was totally blown away because I was coming from the East Coast and lots of trees, lots of water, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was pretty spectacular to come out here. Now, did I know you were from the East Coast? I don't know that we've had this conversation. I don't think we have, (laughs) but listening to the Desert Lady Diaries, I learned that you are also from New Jersey. I am. I am from New Jersey. There are so so many of us, really. It's pretty random. All of us Jersey girls (laughs) out here. It's pretty great. (laughs) Amazing. So, what was your first impression of the place, the desert? I was actually blown away by the Joshua trees when I came here the first time. And the Mm. rock, the rock formations Mm. were incredible. But we were only here for a day. And uh, sad to say, it took me... 22 years to come back. (laughs) Wow. And how did that happen? A year and a half ago, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends from the Bay Area, um, who had been living in Roswell for uh, close to two years at the residency there, was trying to convince a bunch of his friends to move down here. And so for his 40th birthday, he invited us to come to Joshua Tree. And so we came out here and I came in the middle of the night and we actually stayed in one of the Sibley's places out in Wonder Valley Wow! by the airport. I didn't know it was the Sibley's place until recently. Right, right. But, and for um, those people who are listening, you may have heard in uh, referenced in other podcasts a place called The Palms and that is owned by James and Laura Sibley, brother and sister, and their mom, Mary. And I met Kate, actually, there at, at the, the Palms, palms. <laughs> for <laughs> Bloody Mary breakfast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I came out here in the middle of the night, and I woke up in the morning and kind of, like, looked out the window at the Claycorn Wilderness, and she pulled past and was like, oh, my God, I need to wake up to that every single morning for a long time. And now I do. It is a pretty amazing. I was just out the last two mornings have been fabulous with the clouds and the sun rising. Oh, and totally. It's Un- unbelievable. Amazing. Unbelievable. I like yeah. to say a different artist paints the sky every morning and evening. Oh, absolutely. Because the light absolutely. and it's always different. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's always different. So then at some point you said, I think I want to be a little closer to this place on a more regular basis. So how did that happen? Well, it happened that morning for sure, and then um, I think we were down here for just a couple days and went back up to the Bay Area, and I had been in a crazy sort of transitional point. I went to graduate school um, five or six years ago now, and getting out of graduate school, figuring out my art career, figuring out what I wanted to do, um, it's really, really hard to live in the Bay Area, and I, I woke up one morning there quite similarly on the opposite side and said, what am I doing here? Hmm. This is ridiculous. I mean, what has happened up there is uh, a little crazy. And the, the, just the amount of traffic and people and the everything has changed. It's, well, even just trying to maintain a residence. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, you know, Kim Sakura was on the podcast, right. you know, early on. And that was one of the main issues for her was yeah. there's no way that I can be here and be creative and be inspired right. when I'm constantly hustling and on the hamster wheel. That's the problem. And that was definitely the inspiration to come here is to um, be in a place where... 
I'm more in line with the work that I'm doing. And I'm very, very inspired sonically by the spaces that I'm in and the work that I make very much comes out of the spaces that I'm in. And finding myself in this really tense, crazy space, looking for serenity, looking for peace, looking for the sublime. I was having a very hard time finding it up there. Yeah. And just in a big transition in my life in general, in my mid forties now, and going through all of those things that women go through in their mid forties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then, you know, thinking like, how do I want to deal with this? How do I want to grow as a person as a woman and how do I want my artwork to evolve and looking at the possibility of continuing to be on a hamster wheel there and say yes I'm going to do this thing that is very stressful and crazy that for the most part was taking a huge toll on my health and and really what the breaking point was is I started to have some major health issues oh gosh yeah last year around this time and it was very hard figuring out what they were and the deciding moment was, I was like, okay, if these things come back positive and I'm, I'm actually sick, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to move because yeah. um, the main thing is to relieve stress right. and, and that will at the root of everything, help your health. Of so course. that did happen. And I decided, you know, that day to come down here to look around and figure out if this was the place and open arms open arms from the the moment I got here. I, it's a pretty amazing community. Yeah, it's incredible. I got here the day before election day mm -hmm. and oh. <laughs> yeah, and I so... I worked the polls on election day. Oh my gosh, you did? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I voted before I came down and <laughs> I I actually stayed at uh, one of Stephanie and Jay's cabins. Okay. Um, and sort of by myself on the land, sat there with a little fire while I feel like the uh, <laughs> world went up in flames. <laughs> Right. Woke up the woke up for the many next, people. Yeah. Woke up the next day was you know after sobbing all night long and um and decided to go you know I was like I'm down here I need to keep keep looking and trying to find places to live and see if this is the right place and mm -hmm. I met a woman that night or that afternoon and she basically said you know you might want to check out Wonder Valley and I so I went out. I just at that night I drove I drove mm. out in the darkness and I was like oh yeah this this is what I'm looking for because yeah. believe it or not Joshua Tree is very um, there's a lot of people here there are <laughs> and yeah comparatively a, and there's yeah. yeah and there's a lot of light there's a lot of action and what mm -hmm. I was really looking for was complete and utter peace and quiet mm -hmm. and um, I also really didn't have a huge idea of how many people and how much was going on out here and people are like oh you can be busy every night and actually right. I could be and, and sometimes busier here than I was in the Bay Area yeah which is which is phenomenal but right I ended up uh this this woman I met hooked me up with somebody who had a house in Wonder Valley and I ended up moving into her house that's fantastic yeah another desert lady that was on the podcast early on mary hunter lives out in wonder valley and uh, she recently had a housewarming and i went out there and i drove i didn't get to get on the road until about seven fifteen, so it's a little darker this time of year right and i was driving up the road it's about a three mile dirt road up to her place and I said when I got there, I was waiting for zombies to jump out in front of my car. Right, <laughs> right. Because it is yeah. so dark and quiet, but unbelievable. amazing. It's unbelievable. Right. And I first moved out there, I was sort of mid-Wonder Valley. And now I'm like pretty much like it's closer to Amboy than it is okay. to Joshua Tree for gotcha. me at this point. Right. So it's really, really desolate. I literally, mm -hmm. my backyard opens up to the wilderness and there's nobody else wow. out there. That's amazing. Yeah. It's so how does that feel? It's exactly what I've wanted. It's why I came out here, and mm -hmm. I, it's it's amazing, and it's really transformed me and my life. When I go back up to the Bay Area, people are like, oh, my God, you know, you're a different person. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's been a long haul since I've been here, and I have been trying. So it's been almost a year now since I started you okay. know, coming out here you right. know, around election time. Right. And it took a really long time to figure out where and how to be mm -hmm. here and yeah it I think it, that's the most important thing especially f and I was the same way moving here as a single woman who didn't know anyone right. that lived here right I was like well where are you going to settle you really need to check places out and then yeah you know don't get too permanent too quickly so that you can 
get a sense of where everything is and how everything shakes out and where you might want to be permanently once you've been here a while. Right, right. Yeah, it it took a while, but like one thing that a lot of people say out here, and it's very true, I think, watch what you wish for because you'll get it. Right. And um, (laughs) and so I'm very clear with my intentions now because like it did literally, it's like from one day to the next it'll happen. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm amazingly situated in a situation right now where I am caretaking for a friend. Mm-hmm. And I'll be working on her house over the time that I'm living there and helping them, you know, build out their dream, which mm-hmm. is very close to mine as Great. far as, you know, the idea of homesteading, mm-hmm. which is, you know, very big out here. Yes. And and I also was fortunate enough to purchase a property on the tax sale this past summer. I wanted to talk a little bit about that because it seemed like it happened really magically for you, oh, first of all. totally. And I've taken um, Stephanie and Jay. Stephanie used to give a workshop on how to do that, and that was one of the weekends that I came out to oh, really? kind of check in with myself and make sure that the feeling I was having about moving here wasn't like total romanticism and right, you're right. not really feeling that. So I came out and took that workshop and it seemed there's a lot of moving parts to it. A lot of moving a parts. A lot of moving parts. So can you just give a, you know, kind of a description of how that went down for you? Well, you know, I when I came out here, I, I really put my nose to the grindstone trying to figure out um first of all you know site specificity is super important for my artwork and letting things evolve and come together in the right way is important too Mm -hmm. and so i was very very particular about the property i wanted to work on as far as creating artwork but i wasn't sure exactly what it would look like am i going to live there is it going to be you know a place with a power and a well is it going to be someplace completely off the grid mm-hmm. and, and you know there's all these things that you need to kind of get to right know is there an electric out. box is it on has yeah. it been shut off yeah right all kinds of and there's the water a, there's a it, lot yeah. of stuff and i think wonder valley particularly is really different than joshua tree and settling into life out there was very different than joshua tree i think i live a very different life than most people who live here right. I actually feel like I live in a different place than they do you know oh for sure and we come out yeah. here to, we come out here to visit right. us people from Wonder Valley well and I mean yeah because there's no grocery stores mm-hmm. there's no you know other than the Palms yeah there's no other places to eat unless right. you crawl into 29 and right. even you know Roy's out in Amboy oh that's not they don't open. really that's not even a cafe <laughs> they're not you know? open right exactly <laughs> I went there for breakfast once yeah that don't do funny. that I actually did before I before I ever even came to Joshua Tree which wasn't very long ago go yeah. two months before that I'd actually gone out there to shoot a short film and they set it up as if it was a cafe and I was the waitress oh my gosh that's so <laughs> funny I love it yeah yeah we, yeah we, we, we ended up in Ludlow for breakfast instead. oh there you go but, yeah um, but it's very there's yeah, nothing there's nothing literally there's nothing out there in Wonder Valley and I think that I'm very inspired by that and I came out here for seclusion mm-hmm. I wanted to be secluded and right. I wanted to really experience like a deep inner silence coming to this space was it was hard to figure out well what is going to resonate with the work Mm -hmm. and so typical wonder valley i just left it out there and i and i felt like every day for like six to eight months i had no idea what was going to happen the Mm -hmm. next day it's like okay i could be moving here i could be going there i could be living in a trailer i could be living you know and i could go to this person's property i could go to that Mm -hmm. you know it's like there's so many options and just like trying to figure out what I was going to settle on. And mm-hmm. so the first tax sale around, I was definitely not in any position, but I was helping friends and doing, just doing research mm, a lot on, okay. on property. That so probably I helped. Had, yeah. Yeah. And so I went through the sort of, um, you know, the experience of doing the tax sale with friends, um, watching them go through mm-hmm. it and looking at properties and kind of like, you know, pounding the pavement, which is a really fun thing that we all right. sort of do. And then what they call the re-offer tax sale happens in August. And it was sort of last minute. I was like, oh, right, the re-offer is coming up. And if I wanted to do that, I need to kind of get in on it now. And I was, you know, Sunday morning before the Palms, I just went through the list of Wonder Valley uh, property. And a couple that I thought were interesting or might work for what I was, Mm -hmm. what I want to do. And I found one in particular that I was like, eh, that one looks interesting. And it looks like it has like rubble on it, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so... I was like, okay, well, let me go out there and uh, take a look at it. And we tried to go that night, didn't work out, or that day, it didn't mm-hmm. work out because my friend's four wheel drive didn't work. Oh, shoot. And then. Because yeah, um, you need that out there. You do, yeah. yeah, particularly <laughs> for this property. Yeah. And so I went back the next morning, like six in the morning, and hiked out to it and ended up finding this little underground cabin. I thought it was rubble, and it turned out to be a cinder block house that's pretty much 
three quarters of the way in the ground. And oh my gosh. So, and you have a little name for it, as I understand. Yes, I call it the Hobbit Hole <laughs> or Hobbit House for the other. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's a Hobbit House. I can't believe it. And so um, I was I, I was like, okay, well, I got to try and figure out how to make this happen. And so mm-hmm. um, there are, you know, are people who helped me out. Oh, great. And so I I aggressively bid on it in the tax sale and won. It wow. was a very scary experience. No <laughs> doubt. So when you do that, I mean, do you do it all online? Did it's you, all online. It's all online. Yeah. So you put yeah. in your offer online, and do you have to send in like a – a certified check or cashier's check for a certain amount of money before yeah. or with your bid or how does that? Yeah, the, the, you know, actually, if you go onto the San Bernardino County website, mm-hmm. they have a they they use like a lot of counties do now just a you know an online bidding system sim- similar to eBay. Oh wow! You put in your high bid and and then pe- it automatically bids for you, mm, so you okay. kind of like know where you're good where you oh, want to be, see. Yeah. and then you know then it it, it times out. And so, you know, if you're aggressive, there are tactics to being aggressive on oh, the tax sale. Oh. And I was, I was aggressive, and um, I, it scared the living daylights out of me when I put my bid in, mm-hmm. and, and it actually went all the way up to the, my top bid almost. Wow. Yeah, so um, I was like, whoa, oh, that was a big jump. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I was, I was successful, and it was really amazing. So That's exciting. now I'm in the process of trying to figure out what that is going to look like. And mm-hmm. so it was so unexpected that it's hard to sort of just say, okay, I'm going to jump in there and work because mm-hmm. um, my idea is much larger. I want to create a larger compound. Mm-hmm. And even though I got the Hobbit house, I wasn't interested in the property for a housing structure, I guess you okay. could say. So right. it's just sort of this amazing bonus. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> but the property itself is situated where there's a lot of wind. One of the elements that really caught me off guard moving out here was the wind. People with the heat, oh my God, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, you know, all these different things right. about the weather out here. I did not know the wind would be so harrowing and frightening. It's yes. scary. And, mm-hmm. and just, it takes over all the space. So you're in this very silent, peace and serene, wonderful middle of nowhere. And then the wind kicks up and right. it just takes over every ounce of space yep. inside and, and out. out the house is howling the trees are howling mm-hmm. the everything is being blown, blown all around. over yes. you know it's like your neighbor's garbage is in your yard your garbage is in the neighbor's yard and and it's just it's incredible you know and so um you know looking around trying to decide site-wise like what is the work where does it go from what i was making which mm-hmm. is very gallery based to land art which is where i'm wanting to focus on this sort of long-term work work that can mm. be experienced over a long period of time okay um what what do i want to do and being a sounder how do i do that and i had these ideas of making like a land organ like Mm. and there are people who have done these sort of organ based things but i work in ultra low frequency so i kind of want to figure out how to use the land and the wind to create these deep low frequency bodily experiences Mm. and so yeah i was interested in that property because it the the wind is the most intense i would say in the middle of the valley in Mm. between um 62 and amboy road okay so i'm technically on two mile road even though the two mile road's not there but it's right near the dunes and so there's just this incredible wind that comes Mm. through and the thing that's exciting about this property is it's the high point and so there are washes that go around, oh. but it's literally the high point of that whole area. Mm-hmm. So, and then you've got a structure that's kind of half in the ground, half right. out of the ground, right. which is pretty awesome for oh, what you're trying to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. Ex- experiencing in the ground and out of the ground, and exactly. that adds a whole different dimension to it, too. Yeah, so, yeah. It's how really did funny. you get interested in doing this sound art I had been connected for years to the sound art community. A mm-hmm. good friend of mine, Ben Voicey, who is the one who brought us all down here to move here. Um, he was a sound artist, and I had lived with him in a uh, warehouse space in West Oakland back in 2000, 2001. And, okay. um, and, <laughs> and so I was interested in sound art back then, but I wasn't brave enough to get into it and start doing it. But then when I went to graduate school, I started off with the post back program at... SFAI because I you know I'd been doing art but I had been kind of you know not wanting to be part of the mainstream art world I was like okay I'll dive into the belly of the beast so let me just go to SFAI for a year and get that get that you know 
ridiculous art world under my belt for a little while <laughs> and then figure out where I want to go to graduate school. And so I, I, while I was there, my first semester, I happened into a class by Letitia Sonami that was basically, you know, dealing with sound from every aspect. And so my work went from being this very politically driven, very um, didactic, you might say, work to being very much based in sound. And, mm. and that came through her just looking at what I'm doing and saying, you want to be doing sound art, why aren't you? And oh, so, wow. And so there's so many uh, synchronicities in how I ended up with her as my mentor. And she teaches at Mills also. And so I ended up um, applying and going to Mills for graduate school. And they have one of the best sound art um, experimental music programs in the country, in the world, actually. Mm. And uh, so I got to go there for fine art and work with amazing people like Anna Merch and, and so forth, and then who do large sculptural installations, and her husband is a sound artist. Oh, wow. And then and then also work with Letitia on a very one-on-one basis for, for in, in a sense, it ended up being like three years. And so she's, she's a huge inspiration and somebody who um who definitely carries through in my life and interestingly I got yelled at for not telling her I moved here but she <laughs> um her and her, her and her uh, partner Brian are both like really inspired by Joshua Tree and want to spend more time down here too oh, so cool. it's very exciting yeah, so it's like spreading great. the love yeah. yeah so they're gonna come down here and my friend Guillermo Galindo also wants to come down here and do mm-hmm. work and another friend Anya Olfeld also I actually bought her helped her buy the tax I bid on her tax property for her so we're both doing sound art projects out there together which is great she's still up in the bay but Mm -hmm. um you know we were just talking last night about her project and what she's doing and how we're gonna you know that's exciting bring a bunch of sound art stuff out to Wonder Valley which is really really and it seems like that is uh the perfect place for that sort of thing yeah it is I, I think the seclusion and just how there's so much space. It really mm-hmm. allows for that to happen, and it's it's exciting to yeah. be able to make it happen. So for somebody who is considering moving here, what are some of the things that you would tell them about to be ready for or that they might find unexpected? I think moving here, I went through many phases, and thinking about it, thinking about this interview and thinking about you know what it was like to come out here, the way I thought about being here last year was very different than the way I feel about being here now. Oh, how so? I guess you don't realize the pace of living in the desert and um, how different of a world it is. And I call it the land of make-believe because I was going to the Bay Area pretty much weekly for work. And I, so I'd be here in Wonder Valley and like living this very like middle of nowhere life where we just kind of, we don't even know what day it is, you know? And um, I, I call it, I call it, a, we have a, a four day, three day week out there. So we have the four days the palms are open, is open. Right. <laughs> and then, so palms day number one, two, three, and four, and the hours that they're open. And then, and then there are the three days in between mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that right. we're all waiting for the palms to open. <laughs> yeah, so going from that pace of life and then going to the Bay Area where there's like rushing around and traffic everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd go up there and I'd, do my work and come back down and I, I think it was it just it was it was crazy um thinking about the world that I was living in here and how different that pace is and I would say it's for you or it's not and I think that it's it's brutal out here it's mm-hmm. not the desert will eat you alive if you're not careful right and you really have to think about that a lot I had one of the first friends I made out here within a couple months was killed in a motorcycle accident on Amboy Road. Yes. And um, that was, you know, really traumatic and very upsetting to our whole community. Absolutely. Um, and really, really influenced my time out here and all of my friends and how we're, you know, how we're connected. Right. You know, there's there's rattlesnakes. There's, you know, there's all, I mean, just, you know, the, the wildlife, the, the heat, the, you know, how your body reacts to being out here is really different. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I've been kind of like, okay, I'm on this ride now. I got to keep my eyes open the whole time because I, you know, you got to be careful. And, you know, I've had several friends who were, you know, we talk about the berms as being bumpers out mm. there in Wonder Valley. So, you know, um, you don't necessarily have to be careful how much you, you know, how irresponsible you are when you're driving. And, you know, I've had people, several friends get in 
at really bad accidents out right. there. And, you know, yeah. not only Nico's or you get passed s- away, but right. like, but you know, other people, you know, like I don't know how you didn't. Ha- how did you make it through that accident? Right. You know, yeah. and so there's a there's a a, a a feeling of freedom and a feeling of like just anything is possible, which is right. amazing. But it's also you got to be careful. It comes with some risk. It comes with a lot of risk, and a right. lot of people they do we do go out there and we're like, yeah. You can really live, like, truly, it's a land of make-believe. I feel like everybody out there has their own life that they've made for themselves mm-hmm. and the way they're living it. Right. And we all just kind of come together, mm-hmm. you know, and, and share that. But right. we're all on our own our own plane, and it's very real. Right. Each of the existences. So it's, yeah. it's fun in that way. It is. Yeah. It's great. But also mm-hmm. scary, so be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go hiking without water. Don't go no. driving or without water in your car. Or something yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's all those little um, yeah. things that you have to be, just have to be ready for. Right, exactly. So it sounds like when you got here, not knowing anybody, that you have found your community. Definitely. <laughs> definitely found a really intensely, amazingly wonderful community. Mm-hmm. And I I really just love everyone out there so much. And out here, I mean, you know, also oh, right. the whole, it's going yeah, to, yeah, it's the fits whole, together a little bit. It does fit right? together. And, and I mean, you know, go yeah. our separate ways and then we come back together. Yeah, it's but. interesting because I feel like I have sort of, you know, there's the 29 Palms Joshua Tree community, and then there's the Wonder Valley community. And one of the first events that I came to out here was the High Desert Test Kitchen. Oh, and wonderful. Yeah, and that's I met Kimberly Sakura there. <laughs> right. And, um, and Sarah, and who Sarah, runs and it. Sarah, right. Yeah, Sarah and Kip. And, mm-hmm. you know, I would call them the welcoming committee for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, yeah. Kip is a wealth of information. Oh, my God, amazing. <laughs> I mean, he just, he knows about everybody and everything. Every, and yeah. I'm definitely willing to tell you about it all, yeah. which is, yes. you know, fun. And, yeah, so... Uh, uh, so yeah, that was a, a really wonderful community to kind of step into out here mm-hmm. on a lot of levels, including art wise, you know, to right. connect with the art community and p- people also who have decided to live their art life and their art career in a different way. Right. And, you know, that's one of the big things I came out here for is to, to shift and change that relationship mm-hmm. so that it felt like it was coming from inside of me. And right. I feel like that's what's happening with artists out here. And I, I feel like every day I feel like I've made the right decision. I mean, there are times when I'm like, what have I done to my art career? <laughs> but it's just different, you know? And, right. and, and, and there are like lots of different times where I realize I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, of course I'm, you know, it's just different. Mm-hmm. I'm not on that other trajectory. Right. I'm mm-hmm. on this one, which is exactly where I'm supposed to be because right. I'm reminded by that every day as things unfold mm-hmm. in the right direction. Well, and I think you know? too that this place, I mean, as it happened to me coming out here, it was very much... One, a feeling of stand up and pay attention. This is a place where you need to come. And within three months, I was here. Right, exactly. And in those three months and working on how to get here, there were a lot of synchronistic moments. Yeah. <laughs> is that how that word yeah, would go yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. That happened that were pretty amazing, that just green light, green light, green light. Oh, it, there was no hesitation. Yeah. But there was also a sense of coming here, there was some purpose and some reason for that. And not knowing what that might be, but feeling like it, the right thing to do was pick up, move, and something will happen. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. There's very much that again with the risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I out. definitely was like, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm right. just going to go. And at first I thought I had to buy property here because the property was so cheap. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to mm. go out there and buy property to live on. And mm. so I was like, you know, looking at listings to move out here and buy something. Then I was like, you know, actually, I prob- let's, I wonder if I could just rent someplace. Mm-hmm. And I started looking at rental prices and I was like, oh, wow. Right. You know, I'm spending nearly two grand in the Bay Area to have, you know, mm-hmm. a full shop and to have, you know, everything that I right. needed and in like four different spaces. And and then I, I could come out here for a third Mm-hmm. Quarter, quarter to a third of the price right. and have quadrupled the space. Mm-hmm. And right. so I'm like, well, why aren't I doing this? You right. know? And, you know, financially living in the Bay Area, I was just tanking. I right. like, I can't, could not continue Mm-mm. to make my art It's work. not sustainable. No, it's not sustainable. And LA is the same way, which is where I yeah. came from. It's the same situation yeah. there. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I just felt like if this area if I could be held by this area, then let's see if that could happen. Mm-hmm. And really, truly, everything just 
I mean, it not only was it like, oh, a door is open. It's kind of like I was being like pushed down this hole. Was exactly. Like, go, go, go. Right. I have yet to figure out exactly what it is, but it's just as it unveils itself, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that, that, there it is. Right, you know? Right. And it's like learning to keep your eyes open, watch your intentions that you put out right. there, and keeping positive in the direction that I want to go in, and mm-hmm. knowing where the artwork is, and knowing where I want my life to be, and focusing on that, and mm-hmm. keeping that keeping that on my eye on that ball and right. and you know the the friends the community the property the everything everything is just fallen in line you know mm-hmm. and and i think whether it's the desert or whether it's new york city like if you've got to follow that right where where you're being pulled to go to exactly you know and watch i tried to move to la three years ago and I swear everything was like no 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 mm-hmm. and I'm like oh okay fine I won't move to LA <laughs> right. all right I'll just stay in the Bay Area and then you know and then I was when I thought about here I was like oh right it, it just the makes perfect sense torrent of water right. throwing me into the into the desert <laughs> right right exactly it is an ocean of a different kind it is an ocean of say. a different kind mm-hmm. yeah I've always been around bodies of water and it's, it's kind of weird to not be but yes I, but it feels like it is I mean I'm out by the dry lake bed it is it's a, a whole nother body of water and there's one of the hugest bodies of water underneath of us in Wonder mm-hmm. Valley I mean it's one of the hugest aquifers mm-hmm. so you know I feel like the water's there we it's just, there we, we just, just can't like, see it can't see it exactly <laughs> it's really saline <laughs> Usually how I like to wrap this is with a question from my 17-year-old niece out of the jar. Are you game for that? Uh, I'm game for you're it. Game for that? I uh, would have to say that I'm uh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Sage advice? Well, oh, my. All right, I'll dig in there. Pick a surprise question. What are some strategies to use to do well in school? Hmm. I would say to do well in school, because I never did well in school until I was doing the thing that I loved. I would say focus on the things that you love and don't run away from challenges. The most rewarding classes are classes that challenged me the most and um, were not classes I thought I would enjoy, like statistics. Right. Um, yeah, d- developmental either. economics. <laughs> you know, these the, they're classes that stay yeah. with me the most, which is mm, really interesting. I mean, you know, I studied history in undergrad and uh, I loved it a lot. And I think finding your passion in what you love and following that in school and not letting the societal ideas about what you're supposed to do and where you think you're gonna go pull you away from your passion i think i was pulled away from art a lot because people said that that wasn't what you should do that's not going to make you a living and you know sounds familiar yeah (laughs) yeah and i found it the most rewarding thing ever to go to graduate Mm -hmm. school and get straight a's the whole time and yes okay art graduate school whatever straight a's you would think well of course that's easy but i you know i it, no, it's no, not. It's and, not. And to, well, and I think that becomes a misnomer to people who then look at the price of a piece of art, yeah, and just don't understand the time and the work that goes into it, and that it is a skill and a craft that is studied and practiced, yeah, over time, and so are many other things right you know whether it's an auto mechanic or an accountant everybody yeah. learns their specialty they took the time out to learn it and it deserves remuneration right yeah. just like anything else yeah artists you know? are not just people who are running around living free life and right. irresponsible i think artists that i know are some of the most responsible people right. because you have to balance so many things. exactly and a lot of what you need to run and it's a business yeah it's and a lot of what business. you need the skills that are needed to run a business are not necessarily taught in those spaces no they're not <laughs> and, and a business a bit any business that comes deeply from the heart particularly the arts is is a very difficult business to run Mm -hmm. because you are up against your heart and decisions that are very deeply financial and you have to decide how you want to make that work to circle back to the desert and moving out here it's like it's decision to to not do it a certain way which is which is very you know blue chip driven Mm -hmm. what have you right art markety exactly well and i think in her asking, if, in my niece asking these questions, I think the answers that I've heard from everyone who's been on the podcast so far are 
really important for young women of her age to hear. Right. You know, that right. it doesn't necessarily equate, you know, the big, you know, I don't know, pharmaceutical rep job that's going to pay X number yeah. of dollars, but is that what you want to do, traipsing around from office to office and yeah. peddling something, or is that really what your heart's desire is? Yeah. And that the number of women that have been on here who have said that essentially they followed their heart's desire and are happy. Yeah. And if we could all get that a lot sooner yeah, than many think, of us did. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, we, we, we as women equate success in this in very male terms. And that means following these specific passions and, you know, so, so toward business and toward, you know, this type or that type of success. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to think as a young woman, well, how do I be successful if I'm not following that sort of patriarchal mold, which, you know, we're not even saying the word patriarchy, but but that's what it is. And so how, how do we find our, our, Mm -hmm. our strengths as women when we're young to say, yeah, I'm a powerful woman and I'm an artist Mm -hmm. or I'm a, you know, I'm a powerful woman and I, I'm a writer. Right. Or, you know, I do these, these different things and to find your strengths in in that and find your strength in your passion. Right. You know, what drives you, that is feminine. And that is, that is how a, a strong feminine society is built. Um, right. Uh, what our passions are. Exactly. Because yeah. if we're all doing what we love, we're a lot happier as people. And that does a lot to change or raise the vibration that's yeah. happening. Yeah. So. And, and it makes makes women stronger leaders. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great place to stop. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Donna. I <laughs> really appreciate this. I'm glad you came. Really Thank wonderful. you so much. It's great to know you. Thank yeah, you for coming on. Too. If you're enjoying this podcast, I would be ever so grateful for any customer reviews or comments you could make on the platforms that you're downloading it from or even on YouTube or SoundCloud. Thanks so much for listening to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast. There are a lot of ways you can spend your time, so thanks for spending it here with us. If you got some insight or inspiration from this episode or any others that you've listened to, I hope you'll share that with me and the other listeners on the Desert Lady Diaries Facebook page. Next week's guest is Dee Davis. Dee has lived in the town of Yucca Valley here in the high desert since the 1950s, and her first trip to the desert was as a journalist for the San Bernardino Sun-Telegram to cover the first interplanetary spacecraft convention at Giant Rock. You've got to tune in for this conversation with Dee. Once again, thanks for listening. Have a great week.